Hey there, Annie and Julie here. Now, before we dive into this episode, we wanted to give you a quick heads up. You see, we recorded this conversation a few months ago, and as you know, the world has changed quite a bit in that time. However, the principles and strategies that we talk about in this episode are still very valuable, so we wanted to be sure to share this conversation with you. All right, without further ado, let's get into this episode. You know, you work to earn money um, and, you know, you believe in yourself and, and you invest in your mind, right? And your education. You don't let somebody fish for you. You go fish yourself. You're listening to Investing for Good, a show that brings you the stories and strategies of people who are investing to build a legacy for their families, create a meaningful and intentional life by design and impact the world around them. And now, here are your hosts, Annie Dickerson and Julie Lamb. Yep. Hey, Julie, how's it going? It's going good, Annie. How about yourself? I'm doing well. You know, I loved what you were saying right before we started the recording about all of the fresh and healthy foods that you've been eating and what a difference it's made in your life. Yeah, it's incredible. I mean, when you're eating, you know, you don't realize that it's so true, like you are what you eat, you know, and you don't realize how when you're eating a certain way, um, or not eating, as in your case, um, you know, can make you feel so differently, and how it can have such an impact on your everyday life. And it's Mm -hmm. been, um, it's been a priority for me for a long time. And only in the last couple of weeks have had the time to, um, you know, think about it and focus on it and make it a priority. But yeah, it's been great. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, We started working with a nutritionist almost a year ago and started making slow changes and um, taking sugar out of our diets. And as you Mm -hmm. mentioned, not eating. So Mm -hmm. don't worry for the listeners. It's not that I'm completely (laughs) not eating. I'm doing this thing called intermittent fasting, which the first time I heard about it, I was like, what? That's crazy. You don't eat for part of the day. And so the first time I heard about it was my friend um, who he only eats dinner. Like mm-hmm. he doesn't eat anything during the day. He drinks tea during the day and he only eats at night. Mm-hmm. And I thought, that's outrageous. Why would you do that? You know, how mm-hmm. can you have energy to sustain you yeah. throughout the day? Yeah. And um, my nutritionist recommended, she was like, you know what? Just try it. See if it works. And I tried it and it's the craziest thing. Before I used to get these cravings in the middle of the day or like after lunch, I'd get all tired and that mm-hmm. doesn't happen anymore. Yeah. And I think my body's just gotten used to it and I'm just like not hungry. It doesn't, the food doesn't distract me during the day. I can focus and it's just like you said, once you change what you eat and you find what works for you, it changes everything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. everything in personal and business Mm -hmm. and your investing decisions you go into it with a much clearer head Mm -hmm. (laughs) yeah yeah well it's funny we're talking about this I didn't actually put two and two together before we started talking about this but the reason that we started working with a nutritionist was actually because we went to UPW or Tony Robbins Unleash the Power Within Last right. March, which is a big part of what we talk about with today's guest, Letizia Alto. And she was at that same Unleash the Power Within event with us last March. And she and her husband, Kenji, they run Semi Retired MD, where they help physicians to reach financial freedom through real estate. And so we talk about all of that and more in this conversation. Yeah, it was so refreshing to hear someone who's been able to achieve financial freedom um, through just a handful of rentals. I mean, they don't have a whole bunch. I mean, they certainly have more than just a few. Um, but it is so nice to hear uh, her story of how they got started, which was only four years ago, mm-hmm. which isn't that entirely long ago, and how, you know, they're able to, they figured it all out. It sounds like, you know, they've got the tax side of it figured out and they've got, you know, how do we leverage everything and make everything work as hard as it possibly can for us um, and still get to do what they love working still seven days a month and then traveling the other three weeks out of the the month is sounds like a dream to me, um, but was so 
such a fun episode. Yes. And she talks about how they're doing the work that they love. Now that they yeah. don't have to work, they get to do the things that they love. Mm -hmm. We talked to her about the ripple effects of mm -hmm. what they're doing. And she yes. mentioned that it's not just about helping individual physicians to retire or spend more time with their family. That's only the beginning. It's about mm -hmm. helping the medical community come together as a whole to fix the things that are wrong with the system, which is so, mm. so powerful. Everything. It's everything that we talk about. It's investing for good in a nutshell. Such a great one. All right. Well, without further ado, here's our conversation with Laetitia Alto. Laetitia, how are you? I'm doing great. I'm so excited to be here and to be part of the beginning of your podcast. I'm really, really yes. excited for you guys. It's we great. are thrilled to have you. But okay, so first of all, let's talk about all the various hats you wear. You're a physician, which in and of itself is a pretty demanding career and lifestyle. And on top of that, you have three kids and you invest in real estate, and you run semi-retired MD together with your husband. So I got to ask you, have you, you know, just figured out a way to squeeze 20 more hours into your day than the rest of us? Or how are you able to do all of that? Uh, that's a great question. I am very busy. You know, if you asked me that question about eight months ago, I would have told you that it was crazy. I was a little bit overwhelmed. I was just doing the best I could. Actually, it's really a mindset is what I realized. You know, there is a lot going on. And if I let myself get overwhelmed, if I let myself get stressed, then um, I really, I mean, I really would just want to give up, right? But if I focus on all the things that I am getting done and all the really great things going on and I don't ever really allow myself to get exhausted, I know that sounds kind of out there, but I, I realize all of it's really a mental mind game that you can convince yourself and, and know that you have unlimited energy and you can get a lot done. And so it was actually a mindset shift for me eight months ago. I love that unlimited energy. And it's just, it's at your fingertips essentially, right? Because it's a, you just, it, as soon as you decide that that is the mindset and the framework you're going to work with, then it's there for you. It is. And then, and then you could get energy from the same things that used to exhaust you. Yeah. Yeah. That's so funny. That sounds like a Tony Robin ism. And I know about eight months ago, we were all there together. So mm -hmm. do you feel like I'm a huge Tony Robbins fan, as is Annie. And, you know, we employ a lot of his beliefs in our work, in our personal lives as well. And so do you feel I'm just curious, um, not to segue off topic, but do you feel like Tony Robbins uh, and all he has to offer definitely contributes to your ability to juggle all of these different things that you have going on in your life. Yes, totally. Actually, you're absolutely right. It was it was that conference that we got into in in March. Mm -hmm. You know, before that, we hadn't really. I mean, we had been writing our blog for about a year and a little bit, and we hadn't monetized it. We hadn't grown our group significantly compared to what we've done since March. Mm -hmm. So really Tony Robbins mindset and, you know, allowed me to actually accomplish that much more by realizing was mindset. And I even have this little, you know, trampoline in my office. I mean, I went that in. <laughs> Oh, wow. For those who don't know who are listening, Tony Robbins is always jumping on this mini trampoline right before he gets on stage. And that's part of it is just kind of changing your energy state by by jumping on a trampoline, listening to music and and realizing that, you know, in that higher energy state, you will get that much more done. Um, and so that's yep. what I've definitely done. Love that. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. <laughs> so take us back because I'm, I'm curious... So you're a physician and a real estate investor. So which one came first? So I've been, so I finished my family medicine residency in 2011, I became a hospitalist. So I actually did a hospitalist fellowship and a hospitalist takes care of, of people who are sick enough to come into the hospital. So we actually go to the emergency room, admit people to the hospital, take care of them during their course and then discharge them home or to a nursing facility. So I started working as a hospitalist in 2013, then became a real estate investor in 2015. 
my husband had actually been investing in real estate since 2001 on and off and actually playing appreciation games. So he had been killed in 2008, basically, and hadn't made a whole lot of progress. But um, in 2015 was when we really started investing together. And we were able to build up our portfolio and get real estate professional tax status was when we really just took off. Mm, okay, so he had started in 2001, sort of slowly on and off, uh, and didn't maybe didn't do so hot in 2008. And here you are in 2015, and you guys decide that you're going to make a go at it together. So then, what did you do at that point? Did you invest in a single family home? Did you invest in multifamily? What did you do? So in 2015, when well, we basically read Rich Dad Poor Dad, right? Which everyone in the real estate sphere reads. And just you shift your mindset and you realize, you know, you want passive income or you want income that you're not trading dollars for hour. And so clearly real estate, at least in my opinion, is the best way to do that better than stocks, better than anything else. And so we decided to do was do cash flowing VC type multifamily rentals. We went small because it was what was accessible to us. You know, it wasn't like we had enough money to just go out and buy a 20 plex or something like that. Um, I don't know if we would have done it differently if we had that. It it was nice for us anyway, um, because we didn't have a whole lot of mentorship in the beginning to buy these small properties so we could kind of learn. One thing that we did, which was extremely fortuitous, is we learned two really important concepts the first year with these small multifamily. So luckily we actually bought 12, we got up to 12 doors that first year. And that allowed us to realize this, this thing called real estate professional tax status, which I'm sure you guys are aware of, but I'll I'll kind of just tell your listeners a little bit about it. It's a tax status and you don't need to be a real estate agent to get it. It's actually a tax status that you can get if you spend greater than 51% of your time doing real estate and a minimum of 750 hours a year you know, in real estate. So for example, for physicians who are working full time, you know, let's say they're doing 2000 hours as a physician, they need 2001 hours in real estate. And, and that's very difficult. So um, we actually had had Kenji cut back to half time our first year to be able to achieve the status. And what it allows Mm -hmm. you to do is to write off all your losses off your active income. So because of that, Kenji and I were able to basically shelter all our taxes and stop paying income taxes. And so we've not been paying income taxes since 2015. Wait, 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 wait. I know. Wait, wait hold on. Wait, wait, wait. You're, you're, are you, is this legal? Wait. Or? <laughs> <laughs> you cut back, you cut back, Kenji cut back his hours and then you are now no longer paying income tax. That's exactly right. That, that's insane. And all that is because of your um, new tax um, tax status. Right. It's real estate professional. And it's something you actually elect and say, yes, I meet this criteria. It's not something that anyone mm-hmm. gives to you. Right. And so we, we had the criteria. We knew that we wanted to reach it because we knew it would save us, you know, 50, a hundred, you know, actually one year it saved us 190,000 in taxes we would have had to pay. And because we've never lived on our real estate income, we've taken that money and just recycled it and recycled it back into more properties that allowed our trajectory to just be ridiculous compared to what it would have been if we didn't have that. Um, So I would say that was one of the really fortuitous things that happened. Um, And then the second one was that we did some rehab projects partially because we needed hours for real estate professional. As I mentioned, you have to have 750 hours minimum, but 500 of that has to be spent on your own properties doing material participation. And so we we did some projects to help us make sure we had enough hours that first year. And back then there was no bonus depreciation, which was a real new Trump thing. Um, And we should definitely talk about that. I'm sure your listeners mostly know about that. But back then there was no bonus depreciation. So what we really used was rehab losses to make sure that we weren't paying anything. So we would do major rehabs every single year. And with rehabs, you know, you put in money, but your returns are so much more significant. I mean, you guys do a lot of multifamily. I mean, I know that what you're probably doing is your projects are, they're buying, you know, BC class properties, rehabbing it, you're increasing the rents totally disproportionately, increasing the value of the property. And then when you go to sell it, of course, you get a lot more or you could do a cash out refi, take that money and then recycle it. And so that same piece of money works for you over and over and over again. But then also you have the tax breaks of all the write offs. And so how I was looking at it was actually the government pays for a third of our rehab. 
It's crazy. Mm-hmm. So once mm-hmm. we figure out those two things, I mean, that really helped us grow our portfolio very quickly. I feel like once you realize that, you know, the tax law is really set out to help us rather than be against us. But so many people out there believe that the tax law is set up to get out, get you, right? Yeah. But once you understand how taxes work and how you can use it to your advantage, suddenly it's everything is in your favor. So I love that you brought that up because I think so many people who are not involved in real estate don't understand this idea and don't understand the power of um, how real estate is so closely connected to taxes and how it can help you avoid paying taxes. Right. So, and actually, kind of like, yeah, I definitely want to build on that, Julie, because that's really, really important. We have a lot of people come to us and say, hey, I want to pay my fair share in taxes. I don't, you know, I don't think it's right to not pay taxes. Right. We've actually done the numbers. We've done the analysis. We pay more in taxes now than we did back when we were both full-time physicians. And the reason mm-hmm. is we're paying property taxes and we're employing yeah. so many people. We have property managers, we have contractors, we have all these people that we're paying every year. And when you look at what they pay into the system from money that we give them and then our property taxes, it's actually higher. So we're contributing right. to the growth of the economy, which is exactly what the government exactly. wants, right. which is exactly mm-hmm. why they make these tax loopholes there and that's why they build it into the system that's Mm -hmm. exactly Mm -hmm. right and i was gonna add that you know it's almost like when you set out to create rules in your household right or rules for your kids you're incentivizing certain behaviors right like Mm -hmm. um i will shamelessly pay my kids to take out the trash right and i'm like okay well that's something that contributes to the household and teaches them work work ethic um And so that, you know, that in many ways, that's the same as the tax code because they they wrote that to incentivize certain behaviors that will help the overall economy in the country, just like you were saying. And so the fact that you're taking advantage of that is not, you know, it's not illegal. It's not against the rules. It's actually working with the rules. I would love it if my kids voluntarily took out the trash and cleaned up, <laughs> cleaned out the house. You know, I don't pay them to play because that doesn't contribute to the household, but I pay them for things that contribute to the household. Exactly. Yeah, that's really well said. Okay, well, so so now these days, are you st- are you working full time as a physician still, as a hospitalist? Yeah, so, yeah, so I'm actually half time now. Uh huh. Which is only one week a month, so I cannot complain at all. It's I just do seven seven days, seven to seven, and I'm done for the month. Um, it sounds like you- every every doctor's dream. It is. It is. It's amazing. And then, you know, I still get to keep that, keep my skills up, get to have those social connections. But then, yeah, we have a lot going on with the blog and, and with our own real estate too. So yeah, there's a lot going on still. Wow. And now you're working with, through semi-retired MD, you're inspiring and working with a lot of other physicians. So tell us about that. So um, semi-retired MD is a blog we started last year or not last year, sorry, now it's 2020, so 2018. Um, And Kenji and I basically started it because we had achieved financial freedom investing in real estate, and we had all these friends we were helping. I mean, I imagine you guys actually started for similar reasons, right? You're probably helping all these people because they saw what you were doing, and they saw that you were able to kind of cut back at work because of what you were doing. Um, And so that's what we did. Um, We had all these friends we were helping. We realized... We were answering the same questions over and over again, and also that we were helping them um, in bits and pieces, but not giving them a system, if that makes any sense. And so what some of the limitations were, we weren't weren't necessarily giving them all the pieces all at once in an organized fashion. Um, And so we started blogging. Um, We really didn't monetize it that first year. We just, we did it as a labor of love. And then after we went to Tony Robbins and we signed up for Platinum Partnership, we both signed up that first time. We realized we really needed to monetize it. So, And one of the cool things was what we learned was people love courses and it was a great Mm -hmm. way to organize everything we were doing piecemeal, even more than the blog. Uh, Because in the blog, we would just kind of come up with what we wanted to write about that week and just write it. and, And it wasn't really like systematic. And so then we built our first course and released it in August of this year. 
it's really focused, as you mentioned, on physicians, but also high income earners. Because I was speaking about how, you know, real estate professional is really for people or it makes sense, most sense for people who make over $150,000 a year, because above that, you know, you lose a lot of the write-offs associated with real estate unless you have real estate professional tax status. And what we did was we put together everything we knew about investing in small multifamily mostly, but now we've gotten into larger ones ourselves. So we've learned that. And then along with the tax benefits and built out this whole course. And then our first time we had 200 people join us for our first course, and then they brought in their spouses. So it was really more like 300. And then our current course is ongoing. It's got 240 people who signed up. So it's been, nice. it's been phenomenal. And the people are wonderful. I mean, same type of people as you guys deal with, just amazing people who just want to make their lives better. They want to spend more time with their kids. They want to, you know, actually get to be there at home, not for physicians, not charting at night, you know, for your professionals that you guys are serving, just actually be there at home and not be stressed. Right. And what do you foresee as the impact, the ripple effect of that? You know, if you're now you've had over 400 people go through the course and many of these are physicians and high income earners. They're able to invest in real estate, perhaps get that um, real estate st- professional status. Um, and now they're able to maybe cut back and spend more time with their family. So what do you see as the ripple effect both in the medical community and outside of the medical community? So uh, that's a really great question. I can see the immediate effects because I can see people cutting back and I can see even some of our students have already quit their jobs, um, which isn't great for medicine as a whole, but I do think that medicine as a whole is a bit of a broken system right now. Physicians are really burned out um, and unhappy and there are a lot of regulations and they've lo- that are coming down on them from people who aren't in medicine and they've lost a lot of control. And so my hope, my dream really is that physicians will achieve financial freedom and that as a group, we'll be able to band together and then go change the medical system because it's really difficult to do that from the inside when you've got 200,000 in student loans and you just got to work, you know, 80 hours a week, you just got to put your head down and work. But when you can get out and, and you work half time and you have this other source of money funding you and your you know work isn't what it used to be, you can actually vote with your feet. And eventually, mm-hmm. you know, when we all have enough finances, we'll be able to pull it and really start to make some changes and changes that come from the inside because it's physicians. It's not somebody else from the outside who doesn't really understand how the system works, you know, trying to come up with ideas and solutions for the problem. So that's my hope for the future. I love, I love that. I, love well, I feel it. like that's so much of why we do also mm-hmm. what we do um, is because we're, you know, trying to make the world a better place one person at a time, you know, and it's like if more people could focus on how can I free up my time so that I can be where I should be, which is following my passion projects, following things that are meaningful, important to me. Mm-hmm you know, spending time with my family rather than out there trying to figure out how they're going to climb the corporate ladder or just even get through the days and the weeks and the years. It's, I just feel like the world would be so different if people had that freedom to do that. And so that's part of, you know, our mission here on the podcast um, is to let people know that there's other ways to go about this. We'll get back to our conversation with Letizia in just a minute. Have you been thinking about investing in real estate, but aren't sure you have the time or the desire to manage the investment? Perhaps you're afraid, like we were, that you'll make the mistake of choosing the wrong market or the wrong team and lose your entire investment. Well, that's exactly why we created the Good Egg Investor Club. We do the work of identifying solid real estate investment opportunities in the best markets around the country and then partner with you to acquire these investments and then we'll all share in the returns. We'll identify the growing markets, strong, experienced teams, and the solid deals. We do all the heavy lifting of managing the tenants and the renovations, and as a passive partner, you get to enjoy all the benefits of investing in real estate, monthly cash flow, long-term appreciation, and the ongoing tax benefits. When we first discovered passive investing through real estate syndications, we realized it fit perfectly into our busy lives. We could put our money to work for our families, work less, 
and get more time back in our days so that we could focus on what matters most and discover our true passion and purpose in life. We've now helped hundreds of people invest passively in real estate syndications and are seeing the positive impact it's had on their lives. We invite you to partner with us by joining the Good Egg Investor Club today so you can start putting your money to work for you and get more time back in your day because we know that when people have more time in their days, they can do the true work they were intended to do and the world will be a better place. To sign up for the Good Egg Investor Club, go to goodegginvestments.com slash invest and we'll take it from there. That's goodegginvestments.com slash invest. And now... Back to our chat with Laetitia Alto. I'm curious, tell us more about what you guys are teaching in the course. If anybody's listening and they're a physician and they say, hmm, this is, I'm curious, what do you, what exactly do you teach? What's the outcome and how do you get them there? So let me um, quickly step back though to what you just said, Julie, because I think what you guys are doing with focusing on women, especially is amazing because these Because women, you know, when they gain the financial freedom, but also the education that you're giving them, they're passing that on to their kids. And so we're going to, I mean, even if, you know, you're, you know, just making changes within your own family, those changes Mm -hmm. are changes that will last generations because now your kids realize they don't have to go work 40 hours or 50 hours a week at a job they don't love, right? Once your kids know how to invest in real estate, that really frees them up to have that source of income. And now they can go do the job that they really want, the job they feel passionate about. And so I think focusing on moms like you guys are is really a beautiful thing for, you know, changing generations of of families, you know? Yeah. Well, definitely. And also just giving, giving moms like another avenue because I think so many women just don't even know this even exists and that's part of our mission is to let other moms know hey there's another way out when I first got into real estate investing and wanting to help other women I would be in mother's groups and they would be like talking about I'm looking for my second job or I you know want to take time off from this job I don't really love but I don't know how I'm going to you know help support the family and you know all of these types of questions and it's like learn about real estate because I guarantee you there's something in real estate that you might be drawn to that will help you and so um so much of what we do is is because of that so yeah yeah. And women are great yeah. multitaskers naturally too, right? And Absolutely. So we can balance, you know, family and job and real estate in the corners. Like I just, you know, I know that innately <laughs> we are able to do that. So it's very, that's cool. right. Well, while we're yeah. on the topic, while we're on the topic, so we'll come back to the course because I yeah. definitely want to hear more about that. But while we're on the topic of moms and real estate, so tell us what you're teaching your kids. How old are they now? Um, so we have, I have a 16 year old stepdaughter and a four-year-old daughter, and then a two-year-old son. So I'll tell you a little bit about the 16-year-old stepdaughter because we've been dragging her to our property (laughs) since she was about maybe... I guess 13, maybe we started taking her and, um, and we even play cash flow with her, which is Robert Kiyosaki's game. Right. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, now after years of hearing this stuff, she was really starting to get it. And, and she wants to invest in real estate as kind of her side made money maker. Her primary motivation is to reduce stress, which isn't surprising, right? Because high school is super stressful, like studying is really stressful. Um, and she hasn't always loved school. And so for her to think to herself, like, hey, if I have this source of income, then, and I know it's coming in and it's stable, then I don't have to feel the stress of knowing I'm relying on a paycheck. And so that's really motivated her. Um, and I mean, we're constantly talking about returns and we're ta- constantly talking about, you know, being an investor, not playing appreciation. We're teaching her all the numbers. We have dragged her to some rehab projects and talked through what we're doing. Um, so she gets it. And now we take her to Tony Robbins stuff. So now she has the mindset too. And she's starting to really believe in herself and see herself in a different way. And to know that, you know, just because you don't love school doesn't mean you're never going to be successful, which I think is a really mm-hmm. important concept. Um, for my little- I wish that I had known that when I was in school, because I, I was 
I was very good at school. I was taught like you grow up, you, you study very hard and that's what you do. You learn everything from books mm -hmm. and from whatever your teacher's teaching you. And then that will lead to success in life. And once I graduated from college, I realized, wait a second, <laughs> there's all this other stuff I never had a chance to learn. And I was heads down with my head in a book and, you know, I missed all of this other stuff. So I had to learn it outside of the classroom. But that's so wonderful that she's learning that now. Yeah. No, I mean, we all went through that, right? None of us came out of the school system understanding really at the core anything about except go to work, right? We didn't understand finances. It's only something that I've gotten to learn about since 2015. Before that, I was just, you know, blindly putting my money in my retirement because that's what I was told to do. You know, I saved money, but I didn't do any investing at all. And so, yeah, I think, I think this is something totally lacking in the school system. I know we're going to have to educate our own kids about it. Because I think that and like how to have healthy relationships are like the two most important things and neither of them you get in the school system. Yeah, I am. A, I think that there's some kind of conspiracy theory. That's what I think. <laughs> I think there's some conspiracy theory out there about why. Why are finances not included in our education? Why is entrepreneurship not included in our education, you know, K through 12 in some form or fashion? Why is it not? And you have to wonder, is it set up like that? Um, and so uh, that's something that Annie and I love to do also through Junior Achievement is to, um, you know, help educate little kids, uh, really young kids um, about entrepreneurship and finances, because it's just not something that's taught. And I feel like Annie said, I wish that I knew these things, you know, way back, even before college. Like, I wish I knew this when I was six. Instead, I was out there hustling, like making little FEMO clay things going door to door. <laughs> like, if I knew that there was a better way, I would have just invested in real estate, you know? So, uh, yeah. Yeah, Robert, so I love that. Robert Kiyosaki says schools, schools raise employees, right? That's, I mean, that's what they're right. doing. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 And so, so is there anything else that you're teaching like the younger ones about real estate? I'm just curious because I know as the kids get older, it's easy to find things for them to, you know, relate to. And, uh, but it's the younger ones that I'm always looking for tips and tricks because I, my youngest is still four. So, you know, looking for ways to uh, educate him. Yeah. So, I mean, same, same age, right? Four. Uh, my daughter is definitely getting it. And I don't, and I know part of it's just, she hears these conversations all day, but she's, she also like, she wants to go like to baby shark concert. I'm sure you know about baby shark, uh -huh. right? Yeah. And yeah, yeah. that's in, they're in South Korea, actually. And I'm like, well, you got to earn money. You know, you got to figure mm -hmm. out how to earn money. You got to come up with ideas. And, 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 you know, it's not like she's done anything with that, but I definitely have one, when, when I asked her, um, in the, in like within the last month, I asked her what she wanted to do when she gets going up. She's like, I'm going to be an investor. And then she has, huh? what it means, <laughs> but she's, you know, she's starting to get it. And, and, uh, you know, same with the Tony Robbins stuff. I'm teaching her to manage her emotions and, and teaching, I mean, she has this little incantation, she says, with me, yeah. um, that's like, you know, I am brave, I am generous, I am, yeah, I am uh, lively, you know, whenever I fall down, I get right back up, right? So that's teaching her grit. And then it says, I am master of my emotions. So I'm trying to teach mm -hmm. her that she controls what she thinks and, it, and she controls her emotions. And then it's, you know, I am enough. Yeah. So she says those things. We make it kind of a game to say it to each other every day. And so uh, those little things, I think they get ingrained. And yeah. mm -hmm. time, I know she's going to come out of this with just a, kind of an opinion. Like you, you, you know, you work to earn money um, and, you know, you believe in yourself and, and you invest in your mind, right. And your education, yeah. and you don't let somebody fish for you. You go fish yourself. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. what I'm trying what? to teach her. What, I mean, talk about ripple effects. I mean, I, I, can you imagine if every person from the time they were young had every day said to themselves, I am enough. I am generous. I am brave. I am kind. And that were instilled in everyone that would yeah. completely change everything. Tony Robbins needs to do a kid's like um, UPW. I mean, it just, there needs to be a kid's version of that. I, after I came back last year from UPW, I was like, that's it. I'm going to create a UPW for kids because 
it exactly what Annie just said. If, you know, more people could be taught what we're being taught in our thirties, forties, twenties, whatever. Um, but start that when they're three, mm-hmm. four, five, six, seven, like what, and as they grow into adults and as they grow to take over the world, like what a different place this would be mm-hmm. like, Oh my gosh, I can't even imagine the power behind that. So, uh, and so, yeah, are you going this year again to UPW? You know, honestly, guys, I signed up for a whole year. I signed up for platinum. I go every single month. <laughs> oh my and gosh! I, jumped really? in. I mean, I really jumped in and yeah, it's been incredible just to learn more about business and mindset. I mean, when it comes down to it, everything, including real estate investing is 90% mindset because yeah. you will hit bumps along the road things won't perform exactly how you thought it was, or, you know, somebody's going to flake on you or some, somebody's not going to answer your question in the right amount of time or whatever it is. And you can focus on that and you're going to get frustrated and angry and you can give up. And then you just yeah. lost your future because you chose to focus on the wrong thing and you yeah. chose to give it this meaning and it destroyed everything. And you didn't get through to the next step, which is, you know, eventually get to financial freedom, you basically just gave up on your dreams. And so what we teach in our course, actually module one is mindset. And it literally is about like, you know, problems will come, you decide what you focus on, you know, and you can get through it. If you have a big why, if you have a reason that you're doing it and it's a really tangible reason and, and it's, driving you and it's emotionally compelling, then you will get through every bump on the road because there will be bumps and things won't go perfectly. Mm -hmm. So we spend a lot of time on that. We spend time on having people list out their limiting beliefs and they're all the same, right? It's like, I don't have enough time. I don't have enough money. You know, I don't know enough. I don't have the right connections. Like those are the same ones, but we make them have replacement beliefs. And so we have this beautiful Facebook group where everyone's saying, these are my limiting beliefs and these are my replacement beliefs. And they get to share that with each other. They get to pump each other up. And then they all get to see everyone has the same fears as they do. So it's it's phenomenal. Yeah. Facebook communities, I feel like, are so powerful. I I mean, I were on Facebook a lot and, and they're, you know, it's just like being a part of these communities where you have other people who are going through the same things as you and seeing what their solutions are or, you know, and just like a whole thread about whatever it is that they might be going through and how they're handling it can just be the thing that like changes, you know, your trajectory. Um, And I just feel like coaching too is so Mm -hmm. Annie and I spend a good amount of money every year on our coaching as well as a mindset coach. And then we have a business coach separately as well, but there's a reason why we have a coach just for the mindset stuff. And I feel like that's such a big piece of, um, you know, being successful and then maintaining that success as well. And so, yeah, so I love that. So you guys started this course Tell us really quick a little bit more about that. So module one, module two, what is the overall overarching system look like? How long does it take to move through it? And um, yeah, tell us the good stuff. Um, So the course is actually eight weeks, but it's seven. Well, it's six main modules and a seventh module, which is bonus tax module. And we we actually only release it a couple times a year because it takes so much um, in, in our part to support the community. I mean, we're out in their hours a day helping our students in the Facebook groups, like you mentioned, like it just, yeah, to look through people's deals to, for everybody to kind of help each other. And so it takes a lot of our time and effort. And so that's why we're actually not going to offer until next year, next fall. We're okay. in the middle of it now, but it's basically aimed at taking somebody who knows nothing about real estate all the way to through the due diligence and buying their own first property and then they go okay. into our membership site where we continue to do advanced education. Okay. And yeah, I think I think one thing that I love about our course and our community is abundance mindset, which is what we were kind of just talking about too, which is everybody helping each other, which is what you guys are talking about. I presume you have a Facebook group where everyone's helping each other. And especially like, it's just, I mean, that is the most powerful part, I think, of our course is actually the community because part of what we do is we say, Hey, you come in here with this abundance mindset. There's enough for everybody. There's no need for scarcity. Share all your resources and help each other go to the next level Mm -hmm. and support each other. And that, that that helps everyone move forward and grow. I love that. I feel like the, 
there's not enough of that again. Right. Like when we think about, you know, if we were taught that like way back when, when we were three and four and like not wanting to share with your siblings or your friends or yes. whatever, and just realizing that there is so much for everyone. Um, and again, like what a different world this would be if that was the case. So, exactly. yeah. All right. All right. Well, well, should we do it, Annie? Should we move into the investing for good impact round? Yeah. Let's do it. Yay. All right. So the first question, so we're going to ask you three questions. The first question is around investing in yourself. And I know we talked a little bit about this already, but what is one thing that you feel like your investments has um, done for you? And you know, how does, how do your investments serve you to make your life better? Uh, I think the biggest thing is just having time with my family. I mean, yeah. Kenji and I both pretty much work from home now, you know, I'm gone. I'm out of the house one week a month, but being at home, getting to see my kids every morning when they wake up, I have lunch with them every day. And then seeing, you know, and it, it's different. The level of stress that I have is like, it's nothing. Right. And, and so yeah. that's really what my investments have done for me. They have bought me time, daily time with my family, not just time during vacations. And how do you feel like that daily time with your family is going to change the way that your kids grow up and become adults? Like, how do you think that's going to impact them? I think that they know that they're most important more than yeah. anything. And, I, you know, I, I don't know that. Well, I knew I know I had some of that. And when I was growing up, um, but I think a mm -hmm. lot of people, um, you know, who's a lot of kids don't have that. And maybe it kind of makes them feel bad. I don't know. Um, but I, I know that my kids feel that they are really important to us and that they have the, the daily access to us. So they, they if they have issues, they can come to us. And again, like how that goes back full circle to contributing to, you know, a better, brighter community full of like responsible citizens and like, you know, people who are doing the right thing in the world. Um, and uh, yeah, so I love that. I just think it's important for people who are listening to really hear that and to understand how important that is, because I feel like if more people, um, you know, were home with their kids, I feel like that's, um, you know, a good thing. So I agree with you. But also yeah. for me, um, I personally would never like, I don't think I'm well suited to be a complete stay at home mom. I love mm -hmm. to have passion projects that I'm working on and for me to yeah. blog is a passion project. So I also yeah. want my kids to see that, which is that, you know, I'm contributing to the world. I mean, so again, to go back to Tony Robbins, right? Two human needs you need to be fulfilled are contribution and growth. And for me, that blog, my blog does both. I'm contributing to yeah. physicians and their futures. And I'm growing every day by learning everything I need to be doing. My kids see that too, right? They see that I'm, yeah. con you know, someday they'll understand that I'm contributing to people and I'm making their lives better. And, and, you know, even though I do go up to my office to work, like that's, that's what I was doing. So I actually think it will help my kids also focus on their passions when they get older and know that it's okay to, or, and, and it's good to, to have that outside the home too. Yeah, absolutely. And that's something that, you know, when I, when I tell my kids, they're like, come on, I want to play. I'm like, mommy's been playing with you all day today. And now it's mommy's time to go and do something that she enjoys doing too. So I'm going to, and I make it a point to step away and do the things that make me happy because it's important for us to have the time away um, and also have the time with them and for our children to see that we're standing up for, for that and, and still doing what we enjoy as well as spending time with them too. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Second question. This one is my favorite one. Um, what is something that you can share with our listeners about investing that you feel like may change their investing um, trajectory? So one little hack or you know, something that you think uh, maybe they might not have thought about or something like that? I mean, I think we already talked about, you know, rehabs and real estate professional, which is a really big thing. I, I mean, yeah. I think the major, major thing that helped me was understanding the importance of educating myself, right? Yeah. Because 
if you know what you're doing, then you always have that to fall back on. No matter what happens mm-hmm. with the economy, no matter what happens with one specific deal, like you, the education is something that can never be taken away from you. And so, right. like you guys were saying with your coaches and all that, like invest in yourself, invest in your mind, because no matter what happens, let's say you lose everything, you still have your mind, which is 95% mm-hmm. of actually everything. So you mm-hmm. mind. Yeah, I, we, like I said, Annie and I spend so much money on coaching, uh, we you know, why it. reinvent the wheel? <laughs> yeah, we invested in ourselves and it's, mm-hmm. that's right. Thank you for catching me on that. One of our coaches tells us never say that you spent the money, right? He always says that you invested the money in yourself. Right. And I think that's so important because I think there's a lot of people out there who are like, oh, I'm not going to go out and pay this guru, you know, whatever and who, you know, all this stuff. But it's like, do your research, do your due diligence, obviously make sure you know who you're working with, make sure there are good coaches and mentors for you. But working with someone is going to cut your time frame. Your, you know, you're learning in half, if not less than that, you know? And so if you value your time, I think, you know, hiring a coach or a mentor, going through some kind of a program is um, one of the best ways, best ways that you can get to, you know, where you're trying to go in the fast, shortest amount of time. And I would add to that, the transformation is in the transaction. Paying them and paying them a lot is actually a really good thing because then you take it really seriously. I mean, the only reason we, you know, got serious about monetizing our blog this year was because we signed up for Tony Robbins and we're like, oh, okay, we got to figure something out now because that was a lot of money to spend. And so because of that, we've taken every ounce out of the training. I mean, if you have a coach and they're a nominal fee, you're not going to take them seriously. I actually would encourage you to pay that somebody who's really good and stretch yourself to pay them because that's how you're going to get results is by, and you'll take them seriously. Yeah. And look at what happened. You took yourself more seriously. And by you taking yourself more seriously, now you're helping three, 400 other people, you know, doing to do what, you know, you're helping them do, but you wouldn't have done that if you didn't spend that <laughs> amount of money because you were just doing it because you wanted to do it and not without too much intention and the organization. And now you have this whole system and you're helping yourself, but you're also helping hundreds of other people, um, which is so much of what Annie and I um, talk about and why we do what we do as well. Yeah. So, um, okay. Last question. So investing in the world, what is one thing that your investments are doing to make the world a better place? So um, my investments, I think uh, what they allowed me to do was the freedom to do the blog and to help physicians. Mm -hmm. And for me, this is the most fulfilling thing I've ever done in my whole life is to see the physicians Mm -hmm. succeed and to see Mm -hmm. their successes, which I'm sure you guys see every time that your your people, you know, that syndication sells and they get their money and you get to see how much it adds to their life. It like fills you up and it's, I mean, it's their successes become our successes. And that is the best thing I could say that I'm doing for the world. Yeah. Yeah. The impact piece of it is, you know, every day I get to wake up and feel like, you know, we're just a little bit closer to, um, you know, making that impact in the world that we set out to do when we created Good Egg Investments and now creating this podcast. And uh, there's nothing, nothing better in the world than than this. Mm -hmm. So. Awesome. Well, Leti, clearly we've only skimmed the surface and I'm sure that our listeners are going to want to connect with you and learn more. So what's the best place that they can go to learn more about you, about Kenji and about semi-retired MD? So you can join semi-retired MD, the Facebook groups. Um, There is semi-retired physicians, semi-retired professionals, semi-retired dentists and semi-retired lawyers. So so there are actually four Facebook groups. Um, our blog is Semi-Retired MD, and we put out all kinds of content. We feature our own like properties even. We go through all the numbers. And what we're trying to do is create actionable content that somebody can walk away from reading and say, okay, now I know what to do. That wasn't just fluff. And so, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And people can reach out to me by email. It's all over the blog. And we're happy to be here to help whomever all the time. Awesome. Well, Laetitia Alto, physician, real estate investor, mom of three, and co-founder of Semi-Retired MD. Thank you so much for spending some time with us today, Laetitia. Thank you, Annie and Julie, for having me. And I really respect what you're doing. And it's really beautiful for moms everywhere. Thank you. 
You've been listening to Investing for Good, the number one podcast for people like you who are investing to build a legacy for their families, create a meaningful and intentional life by design, and impact the world around them. For more resources, check out goodegginvestments.com slash podcast. And be sure to join the Investing for Good Facebook community. And don't forget to subscribe and give us a five-star review so we can continue to bring you amazing new conversations every week. Until next time, keep investing for good.